Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Reza Raj from Redicat and today we are here with... Hi, I'm uh, Bogdan Krivas, Corporate Vice President for Azure Data Analytics. Thank you for joining us, really thank appreciate you. the time. Uh, and uh, which area of the Microsoft Fabric is uh, the area you are Data in? Analytics uh, is the group that owns most systems for, for shaping your data inside Fabric. So uh, my organization has data warehousing, data engineering, which is uh, the, the Synapse Spark engine, Correct. Uh, artificial intelligence and data science, as well as a product which is not part of Fabric, which is uh, HD Insight. It's a product that is designed to help developers take their, uh, let's say, Cloudera or other on-premises open source investments Correct. and bring them into the cloud and run them in Azure. Correct. So, so, um, so this also means that you are still supporting the customers who have not moved to the fabric yet, Correct. right? The that Synapse is customers, still yes. in the in the support plan, and they are going to be supported until, let's say, the time that they move into fabric at some point. Right? Yeah, that's that's correct. So we are fully supporting our Synapse customers. Uh, they made a huge bet on us, and we want to make sure that uh, that we are respecting their bet. Uh, we are going to keep supporting them. We are going to fix the bugs in the product. We will treat uh, with highest priority any kind of security incident that may be impacting Synapse. Uh, and uh, we are building tools for them and documentation to help them migrate to Fabric. Uh, we cannot do that much innovation in Synapse because uh, uh, Fabric was designed to answer to most architectural needs that were not covered by the Synapse platform. Correct. So we try to focus most of our innovation in the, into the Fabric world. But uh, whenever our customers are ready, we are going to support them until they are ready. And whenever they are ready, we are going to welcome them into Fabric and, and give them a bridge through our migration tools. Right, okay. Uh, and, and in terms of migration tools, so um, like what, what are the plans um, for, to help them to migrate easily? <coughs> so the plans right now differ from workload to workload. Uh, people that are using Synapse today, they may use very different products. They may use uh, uh, Azure Data Explorer, they may use Azure Data Factory, they may use Data Warehouse or Spark. Correct. And right now we are working on a product uh, by product set of migration tools. For Data Warehouse, for instance, we are working on making sure that uh, we can extract their code, their projects from an old Data Warehouse, and we can translate and redeploy that code onto a Fabric Data Warehouse. We are giving them in parallel tools for migrating data. Yeah. For notebooks we, and for Spark, we have a different kind of migration. We merely need to translate their notebooks and import them into, into Fabric. So uh, at this stage, we are trying to make sure that we give them workload by workload migration tooling. So that they can have this easier experience of, Correct. of yes. transferring. That, that's, that's great. Now, uh, with, with this, like with emerging fabric and uh, like we had Power BI before, uh, what is um, your vision of this like now satisfied uh, experience and it brings everything together. We have the data engineer capabilities. We had the data science, cap uh, sorry, data analyst capabilities in Power BI before. Now data engineering, data science, all of that comes with it, uh, like what is, what is the vision where Fabric is going from your point of view? So, uh, as, as you know, I used to work in Power BI until about two or three years ago, and uh, things seemed simple at the time, in a sense. I mean, all we had to do is to connect to a number of data sources that were pre-arranged by others. Correct. And we had to make sure that we are reporting very fast and in a beautiful way, visually speaking. Uh, on top of those data sources. So uh, since right. I moved to Synapse, I started getting a deeper understanding of how much work is to get those data sources to be ready for reporting. And um, uh, this is the part where the, the analyst work in Power BI kind of blends in with the big data analyst work that my team is, is facilitating. So if you think in Power BI, you are bringing a few data sources through Power Query, through, uh, or maybe through data flows, and you are mashing them together. That works well. When, when your data is in a few definite spaces. But if you want to do rich transformation on top of your data, you need more. You need a bigger engine to handle all this. And that's what uh, the Azure Data Analytics team is trying to offer. We, we try to give you tools that allow you to shape data in warehouses using SQL, or to use Spark to process any kind of data in a variety of formats, or to use data science to build powerful machine learning model on top of all the data. We are trying to make sure that you can join your transactions from a warehouse with, uh, with maybe your customer demographics from, let's say, Dynamics, in order to make sure that you build a predictive model that is going to tell you when a customer is likely to churn. 
And this kind of, of foundational work of bringing all the sources together in a clean format that can be used by Power BI Correct. is what we are trying to, to cover with the Azure Data Analytics tools. Correct. And, and this, um, this also is like kind of enabled. I mean, it's enabled with a lot of features, but one of those features is definitely like mirroring, I think, that helps uh, people to bring their own data from Snowflake, from AWS and use it inside Fabric, right? Absolutely, and to continue the, 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 the parallel with Power BI, uh, in Power BI, quite a bit of work was done at the Power Query level, where you are preparing your data for what is ultimately the data set in the report right. level. Uh, if I am to generalize a bit, we can think of, of one lake in Fabric as being the great common denominator on top of which all the analytics are being built. And, um, Let's talk a bit about this common denominator, and after that we talk about how mirroring contributes to bringing data there. So this one leg gives you a unified way to look at all your data, wherever it may be in the world. It gives you a unified format to store all your data. It gives you a unified taxonomy through workspaces and artifact folders. So all your data is going to look the same once you get it into one leg. This uniformity allows lots of analytical tools to operate on top of this data without worrying about connectivity. Correct. Power BI can operate directly with the lake, as the name suggests, direct lake. Direct lake, yeah. Uh, data science can build machine learning model on top of this refined data. Uh, if you are using Azure ML, you can use either the generative AI capabilities or you can use the classical data science capabilities to build machine learning models. So any reporting tool can work on top of this unified layer without worrying about 50 connectors to different data sources. So how do we get data? into this unified layer. Well, first we have the standard bread and butter of analytics, which is ETL. With Data Factory, you can copy your data from any source, well, maybe not any, but a few hundred sources that we are supporting right. into one lake. And you get a copy of data that is in parquet and can be used for analytics. And that's nice, and that works for lots of scenarios. But uh, with mirroring, we are making it much, much easier. With mirroring, we can connect your operational database directly to, to, to the one lake and make sure that any change in the database is almost immediately reflected in a lake. And to extend the parallel with Power BI, you all know that in Power BI we had the concept of incremental processing, where you need to select your time dimension and basically all rows that were added after a certain time are going to get uh, refreshed. Well, mirroring is a bit more than that. You don't need to worry about your time dimension. You don't need to specify how the query works. You just trust the, 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 the remote database to expose all their changes. And then you are taking those changes and just applying them over the copy in the lake. So it's a zero ETL, zero friction ETL, much less work for the users. And in addition to ETL and mirroring, we have this fantastic capability of one leg, which is shortcuts. Shortcuts allow you to access data that lives in, in other clouds, that lives in other ADLS Gen 2 regions, but even in, in Amazon or in Google File System. And with this storage virtualization, the upper layers that I was talking about, things like Power BI or, or SQL or, or uh, Data Science, do not need to worry where that data actually resides because the one lake is going to take care of, of redirecting calls directly to that storage. So anyway, through ETL, through maybe directly through, through uh, dumping uh, uh, telemetry information into the lake. Through mirroring or through shortcuts, all your data becomes part of the lake. But now once your data is part of the lake, it's not ready for reporting. For instance, if you are getting telemetry data, you need to aggregate it. Let's say how many okay. sensors are tipping over a certain threshold every hour. If your data is coming from Dynamics and your data is coming from a, a, an, another piece of data is coming from a transactional database, you may want to make sure that the keys on which you are going to join are going to contain information in the same format. So there is quite a bit of data brushing and aggregation that needs to happen in the lake before it's ready for reporting. That's where I believe our team, Azure Data Analytics, comes in. We have the tools that allow you to use distributed computing across the massive Azure cloud in order to shape your data into the format that makes it ready for the higher level tools such as Power BI, uh, whatever other BI tool, uh, uh, generative AI, or, or uh, uh, classical machine learning. Correct, yes, yeah. And, and it is quite helpful for, for, I mean, many of the business combining that mirroring capabilities because now I don't really <coughs> need to worry about the ETL. It is all done behind the scene for me. Uh, plus with the power of data engineering and data science, as you mentioned. Uh, so so with, uh, with this data engineering and data science capabilities, now we have uh, the co-pilot also added into that, which makes it everything much more, uh, let's say, 
easier to use, much more uh, comprehensive as well. Uh, what is your feeling on, on adding Copilot in all of these areas? I'm fascinated by the power of these Copilots. I'm fascinated by all the teams in Fabric have built, but quite a few teams in Microsoft. Um, the Power BI Copilot now has the ability to generate a report for you in seconds. Uh, and it looks good. It doesn't look like I wrote it, like I designed the report. Uh, the Notebook Copilot is fascinating. The Notebook in itself is probably one of the most permissive canvases that we have in Fabric. So if you are using the Notebook Copilot, you can bring external data. You can build machine learning models. You can shape the data in any way you see, and you can also get visualizations. So I, uh, I think that Copilots are, uh, are going to be a dramatic productivity enhancer for all the tools across Fabric, and in general for probably all the tools in software. So I'm very, very excited to see what else is going to come in Copilots over the next, let's say, one year or two years. Or yeah, so. that's right. And, and Microsoft is investing a lot on Copilot Quite these a bit, days, yes. which, is, which yes. is great, which is something, something good to see. Uh, so, um, so with all of these things that is happening in Microsoft Fabric, what do you see like a, someone who is trying to get into the data analytics space, into the data engineering space, or, or someone who is in this space want to just upskill themselves. Like, what, what is your advice to them in their career? Um, I'm, I'm working in or around analysis services since about 2001. And uh, in spite of all this amazing set of technologies and the power of the cloud, there are some things that are not changing. Um, the, the bread and butter of analytics comes to about four operations. You can join tables, you can group by something, you can aggregate and you can filter. That's right. And uh, these four operations are basically where all the teams, whether Spark, Data Warehouse or Power BI, are spending most of their time optimizing the performance. Correct. And um, it would be very useful, I believe, regardless of the path the technology is going to take to understand a bit how these things can be implemented in a computer. Mm -hmm. Because whether you do it in Python, or in SQL, in the data warehouse, or in DAX, in Power BI, the core engine has to solve the same problem. And once, once one has an understanding of the complexity of oh, these problems, right, yeah. uh, they will develop good patterns on how to lay out their data. Because uh, data modeling continues to be the best way to get, uh, to get performance out of your, your data asset. It's true, having a massive cloud allows you to not worry that much. Will my terabyte of data get processed? Yes, it will get processed. But if you do the same thing thousands or thousands of times, then the efficiency of that process becomes important. And to become a good data analyst for a company, it's important not only to solve all the problem, but to solve them as efficiently as possible. So I really believe that understanding core data modeling capabilities, understanding how these fantastic engines are operating is the most important asset regardless of where the technology is going to go. That, that's correct, yeah, understanding how these data structures work together, yeah. Precisely, yeah. yeah. That, that's great. So if our audience wants to give um, you and your team feedback, what is the best channel? I mean, what are the channels you are using at the moment to, to get this the, feedback? The best possible channel for everybody to give us feedback is to go to ideas.fabric.microsoft.com. Yeah. Uh, there, are, there are tons of ideas there. Uh, everybody is posting their ideas. People are voting on their ideas. Yeah. And our teams are taking lots of pride every, every planning session in, uh, in uh, delivering the, the most voted features on the Ideas Forum. Because we, we believe that this is how we are keeping our customers satisfied and happy with our Correct. product. This is our most direct line this of conversation is customer with customers. customer voice, basically. Precisely, yes. And uh, you will not believe how much impact that has on our planning process, how seriously we take your ideas. Uh, we have other feedback channels because you are asking me what other uh, ways I'm, I have to collect customer feedback. Uh, we have our fantastic customer advisory team. And uh, besides being very active on forums, besides writing lots of articles explaining how to get the best of our tools, our customer advisory team is distilling the feedback that they are receiving from tons of enterprise customers. So uh, it may be sometimes overwhelming for an engineering organization to receive feedback from 50 sources. Everybody is going to tell you something else. Uh, the CAT team, they are distilling that feedback and they are going to come to me and tell, hey, the identity support in the SQL is the most requested feature. And is requested by these significant customers. The next one is temporary tables, which is requested by slightly fewer customers. This kind of, of rationalization of the feedback 
gives us clarity into how to move into execution because execution takes months. Yeah. So having this continuous feedback stream from the CAT team allows us to, 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 to guide our planning process. And we are reviewing this, this uh, institutional feedback probably once a month with the mm. CAT team and we are making tight changes, tight corrections to our plan based on what we are hearing from the, from the CAT team. Correct. That, that's great. Um, so, um, if our audience wants to connect with you, is LinkedIn or Twitter, these are good channels for Absolutely. getting in touch with you? Particularly if there are questions about the product, I love to get in those questions and I'm doing my best to answer those. Yes. That sounds great. Awesome. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about that I didn't? No, but ask thank you. you so much for your time and thank you for thank the opportunity you. to talk thank to you. Thank you for your time. Business. Really appreciate yeah. your time and yeah, we can't wait for everyone to get uh, started with Fabric. Uh, yes, please get Fabric today. Thank you. Until Thank the next you. video, uh, bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you.